Hey, I'm CC Summers, and please forgive my appearance. I am still getting over being sick. I just missed you guys, and I didn't want to go another week without hanging out. So here we are, here to get murdered by some cowboys, because it'll make me feel better. <laughs> Okay, so if I remember correctly, the last time we played, we were still trying to get in the sheriff's pants. So we have already, we still have gotten rid of Jack and Dijon, and we talked to Will in the forest, and he defeated the beast for us. But I have not gotten to talk to him again. He just keeps running away every time I get over there. And we started talking to Florence, and we're waiting for the weekend so that we can shoot him in the face. And it'll be awesome. <laughs> okay, I went to sleep to try to just get through the week so we can get to Florence. And something's happening. <laughs> you close your eyes trying to get some shut eye. You feel groggy, unsure of what's happening to you. What the fuck? You shudder, still half asleep. You swear you can feel something touching you. This will be the second time in this run that somebody has broken into our room while we're sleeping. You'd think we would have tried to invest in a better lock or talk to the innkeeper or something. Like, hey, homie, people keep breaking in. Can we do something about that? You peel your eyes open, embraced by darkness. Ugh. That's Will's color. You hear a strange, soft groan, desperate. Oh God. You smell so good. Oh God. You can feel something like, don't, don't jump scare me. Your face is pushed against the pillow and as you slowly come to, it becomes more terrifying. You let out a pitch startled gasp, flinching at the realization that there's someone with you in bed. He's heavy against your back. Ah! No! Your heart beats in your ears as you struggle attempting to get him off of you. But he won't budge. Stop it. You stop it! Ah! You feel his hand grasp the back of your head, smothering your face into the pillow. Oh no. You scream, but the sound has nowhere to go but the depths of the pillow. So warm. Yeah, live people typically are. His breath is hot, voice quivering against your ear. You swear he takes a deep breath of your hair. You struggle, doing your best. Though your struggle seems to only get a rise out of him. Of course it does. Be careful. I don't... Uh, 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 well, disgusting. It almost seems like he's begging. Fuck off! You can feel... Oh, no, 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 no. You'd squirm, attempting to get any air past the dense feathers and pillowcase, getting breaks every so often when he loses grip of your skull. He grunts and you can feel his lips brush against your cheek. Then to your horror, his warm, wet tongue slides up the side of your face. Ew, ugh, this guy is horrible. Your breath quickens in horrific panic, his own breath growing rapid for a different reason. Your skin tastes so sweet when your blood is pumping. This fucking guy. <laughs> You're disgusted by how sweet he sounds. It's too much. Then maybe leave. You find yourself growing weak. Maybe it's fear or lack of oxygen. Oh God, is this the end? Is he gonna kill you? Ew. Ew. You can hear the sound of rustling clothing. He must be fixing his trousers. Then he clambers off of you. Frozen with terror, you find yourself focused on air as you gulp large, thankful breaths. By the time you genuinely come to, he's already gone. Your window left wide open. Oh, fuck. You shiver, sitting up and heading off to clean yourself up. You shuffle back into bed, still left with the horrible feeling of what happened. You settle in your covers, making sure to have checked your locks twice. You never want that to happen again. Ah! 
this poor girl. <laughs> I think so far this has been the worst playthrough for her. <laughs> okay, I guess let's see if we can go shoot that stupid bitch in the face. Hey, Will, what the hell, man? Oh, of course you're gonna hide from me. He knows. He knows. He knows that I'll sit there and fucking give him a noogie with a knife. Can I report a crime? You walk up to the officer, gulping a little. Um, I was attacked and assaulted in the woods. Both. So let's talk about that one. We were robbed. Yes. And then we're going to report another crime. And we're going to report that we were attacked. When I was asleep at the inn, my room was broken into. Oh, really? Give me a moment. The officer turns, grabbing a pencil and paper, settling down at his desk. He looks up at you, nodding as he urges you to speak on. You shift uncomfortably in your position, looking at the ground as you speak. You see, sir, I'm not sure what happened. In the night, someone took advantage of me. He pauses, looking at you. At around what time? Damn, so we had gotten attacked by the beast, attacked by Will, kidnapped by Jack and Dijon, and then attacked by Jack. It's been rough. You think a moment. Not sure, sir, it was night. He nods, looking up at you. Did you get a look at your assailant? You slowly shake your head. All you remember is his breath. You shiver a little at the thought before shrugging. If that's everything you wanted to tell me, I just need your signature on this report. Okay, let's sign it. Please fucking arrest him. <laughs> okay, it is Saturday. So let's go bother Florence. Hey, Florence! What? I want to talk to... I want to talk to Florence! Let me talk to Florence! What the hell? What is he doing here? He's supposed to be dead. Hey, good to see you too. Okay, we're just gonna pretend like he's not there because <laughs> he's supposed to be dead. I wonder if that means that Dijon's back. He is! <gasps> He's alive! They're both alive! Oh no, things just went from bad to worse to horrific. Why can't I talk to Florence? This is some bullshit. The fuck? Okay, I know what happened. I loaded the wrong one. That's why they're all still alive. I don't know why that happened with Will, though. That was really weird. And I'm very confused. <laughs> okay, so this playthrough was the one where everybody hates me except for Jack. Interesting. So why did Will come in my room? Oh shit, so he's here again. So Will came back and he's doing the same shit. What the hell? Hello, Sheriff. He came back. He came back, homie. Okay, well, we got his last ending. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna assume that there's nothing else with him from that. He's just gonna keep fucking breaking into my window being an asshole, so. Uh, we're gonna leave town. <laughs> yes. 
fucking le And I don't want to take anybody with me. What happens if we take Will? <laughs> you decide to look around for Will, wondering if he should tag along. You turn, walking down the pathway to the woods. For a couple hours, you call his name, and finally, he shows up. His knife is drawn. You tense, biting your lip. Hey, uh, I'm leaving town. He doesn't emote or move a muscle. I was wondering if you'd come with me? He looks from you back to the forest. You're like, I love that you keep breaking into my window and doing things to me while I'm sleeping. I'm super into it. Let's continue that. Then without a word, he turns and walks away. Oh, uh, fearing startling him, you don't bother giving chase. Instead, you settle, heading back to the inn and gathering your things instead. You can't help but ponder him as you leave town, curious and hoping he had accepted. Leaving town, you follow along the old, worn path south, wondering where it'll take you. Hopefully somewhere grand. <laughs> Will told me to go fuck myself. He was like, absolutely not. How dare you? This is a strictly, I break into your window and do bad things kind of relationship. <laughs> if you're willing, I don't want it. <laughs> okay, so Dijon's still gone. So this is the correct one. <laughs> this is the correct one. We're gonna go to the creek. What's up, Will? And keep going. Cause he's not talking to me anymore. <laughs> Ooh, are we reporting a crime? You don't feel like telling the police what you saw would be a good idea, right? Or do you? Ooh, do we expose William or no? Yeah, he's fucking weird. You walk up to the officer, gulping a little. I saw something very unsettling. He uncovered human remains in the woods. He's quiet as he retrieves a pencil and paper. Tell me everything. Okay. So I think last time we were truthful, right? Yeah. So maybe we just lie this time. There was a man in the woods. He looked strange. He was large and sort of thick and short, too. You find yourself lying about his appearance. You don't want to expose him. Do you know why someone would bury bones? The officer leans in, a cold expression on his face. I think you should just tell me what you know. You nod, looking away. He was holding a couple of bones. Human bones? You pause, looking at him. Maybe they were just bones. You said they were human remains. He seems to be getting impatient, which is good since you've sort of backed out of this. I'm not sure now. I'm sorry, sir. He lets out a sigh as he finishes writing up the report. All right, thank you. I'll be sure to put this in our record. If that's everything you wanted to tell me, I just need your signature on this report. Yep, I got it. Yep. Let's see what happens to me now. Okay, it is Saturday, so I should be able to talk to Florence this time. Okay, because <laughs> he doesn't hate me in this run. <laughs> you approach Florence, who seems to be watching you expectantly. Take me for a shooting lesson. Let's go. You're gonna be excited. Yay! Woohoo! I'm gonna shoot. Shoot the bottle. Boom! We're excited! Yay! Ooh! He grabs your collar, pulling you close by it. And then... Oh, he gave us a kiss! Uh-oh! His hands are rough, one grasping your jaws, the other wraps around your waist. I think you're just stunning. Aw, thanks. A warm flush crosses your cheeks. With a strange horror, you can feel his hand. Uh-oh, he's getting fresh. The look on your face must worry him because for a moment, his eyebrows raise. You all right? Oh, uh, yeah. He leans down, lips brushing your ear. Nervous? His accent is like a purr. Nah, we're fine. 
You get a hold of yourself, leaning in and smirking against his lips. No, are you? His brows raise and he smiles a little wider, clearly amused. Not at all. At least, not like this. What does that even fucking mean? <laughs> yeah, okay. So we didn't shoot him. We didn't even get the opportunity to shoot him. So what the fuck? I feel jipped. <laughs> we can't talk to him anymore. <laughs> Why did nobody want to talk to me? <gasps> I stepped on something. A hundred piece coin. Yes. Okay, so nobody's talking to me anymore. I think that's about all I got with these people. So let's just go ahead and leave town. Let's get out of here. Yes. And we're gonna take... I don't think in this playthrough we talked to either of them. <laughs> Ooh, so do we take Will now that he's talking to us? And like we had a whole thing with him? Because the other one we hadn't even met him, right? Like, we followed him in the woods and he ran away. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Hey, Will, you want to come? His eye twitches. I was wondering if you'd come with me. He looks from you back to the forest. Then without a word, he turns and walks away. <gasps> so what the hell, man? <gasps> Though, a second set of footsteps catch your attention. You turn, and far behind you stands Will, watching you go. You put a hand up to wave, understanding quietly that he probably won't leave these woods. Right? So you continue on. Not realizing he's following from about 30 yards behind. Oh, he came with us! He creeps behind us! Yay! <laughs> okay, we're back in this fucking mess. <laughs> Last time we just let the timer run out, so this time I think we'll choose Dijon and see what happens, and then we'll choose Jack and see what happens. Uh, it belongs to Dijon, I guess. Oh, I, I, well, Dijon. You gulp at your words. At your choice, Dijon seems to light up like the sun, a grin of pure joy spreading across his face. Oh, darling, I knew you were just lost. You'd never leave me on purpose. His hand extends to help you up, clearly expecting Jack to be as honorable about his deal as he is. <laughs> and he will not be. Your eyes widen and the world seems to pass in slow motion as Jack pulls something off his back. A large shotgun. <laughs> Yay, which almost looks puny in his grip. His expression is unmoving, smile twitching on his face. Dijon, get out of here! You find yourself reacting before you can think clearly. Diving to shove Dijon out of the way of the shotgun. Ooh, we get shot. Yay. Dijon hits the ground hard, fumbling to pull his pistol from the back of his jeans, aiming it at Jack from his position on the ground. You better put that fucking gun down. I don't want to kill you, but I will. Your body shields Dijon from Jack, preventing any clear aim that wouldn't hit you as well which is likely the only thing preventing Jack from shooting Dijon on the spot. Dijon wraps a protective arm around you, pulling you close to his chest. I didn't take you for a turncoat. You seemed like an honorable man, but I guess I ain't exactly the best judge of character. No, you are not. Jack is very clearly the furthest thing from honorable. Fuck you, you creaky dumb fuck. I bet you can't even count. He can't. Hey, how'd you know about that? Jack's eyeballs raise in a strange way, as if he didn't know that to be true at all. He holds the shotgun aimed a little to your left so he doesn't shoot you. Or, well, all of you, if he has to fire. One last chance, okay, pumpkin? Dijon glares, his face still a little pink from the embarrassment of being called out on his lack of counting knowledge. I'm not your fucking pumpkin. This worked out a lot better for Dijon than I thought it was going to. <laughs> Dijon pulls the trigger, sending the bullet shooting from his barrel and landing directly between Jack's furrowed brows. 
What, June? And the man then slumps to the floor. Oh, shit. Well, that worked better than I expected. <laughs> Same. The color seems to drain from Dijon's face, kind of startled by the sight of Jack's body as it slumps. Like David and Goliath, I guess. Dijon lets out a tense laugh, though he's clearly more disturbed than he wants to admit. You stare, startled, at the large corpse. How... How are you going to be able to move it? You don't. You just leave it there. Before you pitch any sort of feeling to Dijon, you both hear a deep growl from the bushes. That works! Dijon's composure drops as the look of shock spreads across his face, staring in the direction of the growl. His hand tightens on the hilt of his gun, though his hand wavers a little. We should get out of here. Fast. Too late. A figure emerges from the brush, not quite as large as Jack, but that doesn't stifle any of your nerves. The growl seems to be coming from the man alone, and you're a bit frozen in place as he approaches the large, burly corpse in front of the two of you. You're quick to look at Dijon for any guidance. Dijon clutches you closer, slowly pulling back the hammer of the gun. He's shaking a little, but he shifts, nudging you behind him carefully. I know bullets don't bother you much, but I imagine they still gotta hurt like a bitch. Take your meal where you can and leave us be, alright? The bastard lets out a strange noise, a mix between a growl and a puff of air, maybe a laugh even. You can feel that this creature isn't afraid of Dijon, the gun, or you. He nudges the large body with his foot, then peers down at Dijon, giving a big toothy grin. Take the body away, sir. Then after a couple sniffs to the air, the bastard proceeds to drag Jack away, muscles large and tense as he tugs. Finally leaving you both alone here. Dijon relaxes once he sees the bastard leave, straightening up and gaining his composure. Let's get the hell out of here before it changes its mind. He stands, hoisting you up in his arms so he can carry you home with him. Why? <laughs> he makes cautious turns, seeming to pause at a few intervals and check his surroundings. But eventually you emerge into the wide open pastures and Dijon carries you carefully to his barn. Again, why? I'm an adult. <laughs> He climbs up the ladder, keeping you held to his chest with one arm. And finally, he settles you down on the scratchy makeshift hay bed, settling down to sit next to you. I'm glad you chose me, sugar. I knew you would. Maybe it's the familiar nickname of a man you once knew, still tasting rotten on your tongue. You both arrive at the pasture. Wait, we're in the barn. We were already in the barn. I'm confused. Right? We were in the in the barn? He settles you down. We're, we're in the barn. Okay, well, we're going to the bar again. Round two of barn. Dijon leads you towards the barn, and once you're both in, he settles down with you along the hay. Not another word is needed as he holds you like iron, attempting to lull you to sleep with soft humming. You jolt awake, startled a little by the pure black room. You manage to crawl out of Dijon's grip, heading through the pasture. You're still quite shaken up from last night. Well, yeah. Um. Okay. So I wonder what happens if we end up sleeping with somebody else after Dijon kidnaps us because we chose him or whatever. Because I like to stir the pot. <laughs> Okay, I slept with the sheriff. Let's see if that has an effect. Nope, apparently not. Oh, what you doing? You're dead. You're supposed to be dead. Mid act burning somebody's house down, but he's he's supposed to be dead. A llama? Okay. I spoke with Florence. Saw the writing in the notebook this time. So that I can shoot him in the face. I'm gonna go to the room, go to sleep. Back to the parlor, head outside, the sheriff's office. What's up? What's Jack doing? Who gives a fuck? When are you trying him? 
Even though he's dead. You know, it's fine. <laughs> oh, god damn it, Will. Ah, oh, you fucker. Mm. All right, strange clown. Let's go. Okay, so let's see. I don't think we got the opportunity to ask about his knife last time. What's going on with the, with the knife, man? You gulp, feeling a bit threatened by it. He pauses to look from you down to the knife in his hand. He takes a deep breath. Self-defense. You can't help but wonder, taking a step towards him. Why would a guy like you need self-defense? You find yourself almost amused and confused, trying to play it up so you aren't so cowardly, right? Like, he's so fucking creepy, nobody would want to go near him. <laughs> he looks around, and slowly but surely you seem to be breaking him down. The woods are dangerous. There's a beast out here. And people. You take a step towards him, deciding to test the waters a little bit. He seems nervous and doesn't budge, and you successfully move towards him. Hmm. He liked when we asked about the bones, I think. Right? Why, why the bones, man? Yeah, he cleans the bones. And it doesn't work when they're nasty. What's uh, going on with the makeup, my guy? I just want to make friends with uh, skeletons. Okay. <laughs> cool. I earned my stalker again. Uh oh. As you're half asleep, you hear a strange noise. What in tarnation? <laughs> you slur, not exactly awake quite yet. What in the hell are you doing here? Was Dijon breaking into our room to steal us at the same time that Will was breaking into our room to be nasty? I could ask the same for you. Uh, who even are you? His words are soft and almost seems to mumble them. Though despite this, they're quite familiar. I'm her shepherd. And will you pipe down? You're gonna wake her up. I'm her shepherd. <sighs> and this is it. This is my man's. This is... This is who I choose and I'm gonna stay by him. Another familiar voice hisses in an irritable whisper. You swear you recognize that guy. Like the Bible? Yes, like the Bible. No, you idiots, like the guy who watches sheep. Duh. <laughs> the second voice snaps back sarcastically. Hold on, aren't you the corpse fucker who lives in the woods? Yes. <laughs> Why are you in her bedroom? The first voice seems to ignore the question entirely. I could ask the same of you, old man. Don't you have a grave to rob? I'm shocked you can even get it up for someone who's still warm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I am very uncomfortable with the vibes we're creating in the studio. You sit up a little, blinking a couple times before revealing the men at the foot of your bed. Are you dreaming? In front of you is both Dijon and Will, dueling it out. Or at least, Dijon mercilessly digging into Will's core being. All right, but if you're a shepherd or something, why are you in her bedroom? I mean, I understand you're always losing your sheep, but I don't think one would end up in the inn, let alone in this bedroom. Will seems to recall many situations where he has heard bleeding in the woods from poor lost sheep due to Dijon's nappage. Or so you can only assume. Who knows how many sheep he had before this? Dijon's face goes a little red at Will's words, and he huffs in irritation, glaring across the foot of the bed. She keeps wandering off and getting lost when she should be with me. I was here to bring her back. And I don't lose my sheep that often. That only happens sometimes. Dijon seems defensive about the sheep thing. Probably because it's true. I'd suggest counting them in the future so you won't lose them so much. The way Will's tone is presented, he doesn't seem to want to jab. More of a genuine suggestion. I can count the number of women you wooed. It's zero. <laughs> Burn. 
but on a real note, I can't count. Dijon rubs the back of his neck, a little awkward about that. Will seems to be thinking, hand moving to scratch his light beard before he speaks again, tone still quiet so he won't wake you. As if... How do they think they're being sneaky? They are literally, like, three feet away from my ears. They're not quiet. I'm like, oh, she's, she's sleeping, shh. We're just gonna argue really loudly in her tiny room next to her bed. Too late for that, obviously. But you talk quite well, though I doubt it compensates for your lack of numeral knowledge. I find myself at times finding much more company in books than people, anyhow. I doubt you have that issue. Will doesn't seem that good at pep talks, but he does know how to handle a strange situation being caught breaking and entering, apparently. Dijon seemed caught off guard by the... sort of? compliment? Um, thanks, I think. But hey, you still haven't told me why the fuck you're in Cece's room. Don't think you can distract me, you creep, says the guy who also broke into my room. Dijon seems to realize belatedly how far off topic he's gotten, and when he straightens up indignantly as if Will intended to distract him, when in reality it's probably just his spacey tendencies. Well, why should I tell you? You're not a confessional booth. Will's voice gets surprisingly aggressive there, snapping back with an annoyed tone, one unlike him most of the time. Seems he really doesn't like to air his dirty laundry himself. Dijon's aggression seems to rise in turn, frustration making him stiffen. Oh, you're a religious guy, are you? Funny, I thought sticking your willy in corpses was against the Bible. <laughs> Behind his back, it almost looks like Dijon is reaching for something, and you see the glint of dark metal in the gap between his shirt and the waist of his pants. Your eyes widen a little, this strange and almost humorous scenario turning dark real quick. No, not anymore, not since I was a child. So, around your age. Ew. Will pauses, freezing in place when he notices the reflection. Not of the weapon in Dijon's grip. No, no. Of your eyes. His mouth sort of falls agape in shock, and he struggles to speak, words bubbling up in his throat until he only lets out a meek sound of complete and utter fear. You're awake, listening to this whole fiasco. Dijon, ever unobservant, doesn't notice your eyes at all, just the expression of fear on Will's face. Well, at least I'm not so old that I should be sleeping in the mausoleum. Oh wait, I bet you already do that. As he snaps back, Dijon's hand wraps around the handle of his weapon, and you feel a spur of panic. Hmm. So basically this is like, do we follow through with Dijon and just like, okay, cool, kill him, we'll escape town, whatever. Or do we switch sides? I guess let's just play it through and then we'll come back, right? Yeah. All you can do is watch in silent horror as Dijon whips the gun out from his waistband of his pants. You almost feel like you should have warned Will or something, but the time has passed for that and you flinch as you hear a deafening bang. Dijon is knocked back by the recoil of the gun, but the bullet's aim is true, shooting deep into Will's heart. I mean, do I feel bad? No. I don't feel bad. Will lets out a strange, choked gasp, staggering back as blood pools from his lips. He goes to speak, yet it's nothing but incoherent babble as he falls to the floor with a thick thud. Frankly, Dijon seems stunned at what he's done, blinking a few times in shock as Will goes down. He takes a slow, shaky breath, then turns to look at you. He surprises to see you sitting up, though he frankly assumes you were woken up by the shot. I, I had to do it. I had to do it to protect you. He was going to take you away from me. You know that, right? You know I did it for you. He seems almost desperate for you to affirm that he did the right thing. To be honest, it doesn't seem like he's really killed anyone before. He takes a shaky breath, letting it out, then moves closer to the bed, still sat on his knees as he comes to take your hand, pressing his face close to it where it sits on the bed. I'd do anything to keep you safe. Dijon drags himself slowly to his feet, looking from you to the body slumped on the floor. 
He swallows hard, forcing himself to smile at you, though it looks nothing like his usual easygoing expression. I should probably get that thing out of your hair, huh? Try to get some rest. I'll be back to bring you home soon. Dijon hoists Will's body up with a bit of a struggle and begins the long march from the inn out to the woods, leaving you to decide what will happen next. You know you won't be able to get much sleep after that, so you curl in bed, left alone with your thoughts of what just occurred. At least until the morning comes. Again, I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. Hey, Dijon, you doing okay? Absolutely unfazed. You gulp. And with much hesitation, you pull the trigger. Bitch. <laughs> he knocks back, hands dropping from you. Florence? He lays there, chest up, eyes wide. Your hands tremble, and for a moment, you could only stare at his body. Your eyes finally manage to pry away from his corpse, instead looking at the gravel of the graveyard. Oh, the irony. Cece? Cece? You quickly look over, and to your shock and horror, Florence is sat up, blood wet and leaving lines along his face. What up, player? He reaches up, wiping it from his forehead with a dark rag from his pocket. I... you... what? He looks up at you. I can explain. Well, sort of. Your memory flashes to his notebook. I can't die. I've tried. I think I'm cursed. He finally stands up, walking up, hands clutching your face on either side. I'm sorry, I didn't think you'd believe me if I told you. Nobody ever has. You stare, biting your lip. Does this have to do with the notebook guy? Yeah, probably. Okay. Okay. So nothing really changed there. Maybe we go back. Like, uh, bro, that's, uh, too much. You got the wrong idea, man. You're fucking, you're dead. You got a bullet hole in your face. This is a lot for me to digest, but yes. <laughs> your breath hitches at the memory of his corpse falling. Oh, all right. He looks ahead. A thousand yards stare. Then it clicks. Well, that leaves us in a situation. You know a very important secret about me. One that plenty have abused in the past. The many scars seem to make sense now. So what be it? What do you mean, Florence? I'll need to shut you up somehow. I'm glad I shot him in the face. <laughs> like, if you don't sleep with me, obviously I have to kill you. Because you sleeping with me is the sign of the ultimate trust, right? He looks away, then back at you. You have the urge to bolt, do anything, maybe even run? But you don't have much time to react as he quick draws, holding his gun. It's aimed well at you, a serious look on his face. You freeze, knowing damn well he'll shoot you. He walks up, nudging the gun to your head, on your knees. With those words, you can see a strange, almost excited look in his eyes. I'm telling you, man, I knew it. I knew something was weird about him. Not just like the whole dying and coming back to life thing, but like something, something evil was in this personality. Just with all of them. Except Jedediah and Magnolia. They're pretty cool. The rest of them, absolutely not. Okay, and Jade. Jade, Magnolia, Jedediah. Yeah. You never could expect something like this out of him. I could. Nah, fuck you. You lunge instead. And we got shot. Oh god. Did you die? Yeah. Welcome again. I wasn't expecting you so soon. I want to go back. Send me back. A simple mistake for a simple creature. But of course, my pleasure. Farewell, my small friend. Ah, thanks, Mordom. All right, 
So we're gonna <laughs> go make the same dumb mistake. <laughs> Robin's have to yell at him. What the fuck? You step back, staring at him with a puzzled look of confusion. You, I, this is crazy. Despite it being crazy, you did just watch him defy death. He was shot in the head. Please, Cece, I promise, I, I was trying to prove it to you. It's important, you know? Why? Because why? This is... He grabs you hard by the shoulders. Because I like you. I like you, Cece. Get that through your thick skull. Duh! You know, telling you to shoot me in the face just so I could pop back to life like a zombie. That just means I love you. His tone is sharp, his eyes wide as his jolt shook you. You need to know this. I needed you to know this. This whole thing, this crazy bullshit is driving me insane. All I know is one day I woke up covered in blood in Florence fucking Italy. I thought you were a fr I am. At least, I think I was before all of this. He stares at you, deep teal eyes shining brightly. Do you realize how insane I sound? Nobody believed me. He shakes his head. I really, really need you to. I want you to be mine. And what he means is he wants to sleep with us one time and then never talk to us again. But for that to happen, I needed you to know. You both sit there silent, only about a foot apart. Okay, and then he... Now! Naughty. But then, okay. As your knees touch the ground, you find yourself shaking. The cold yet kind man you once knew. Thought you knew. He's really twisted and cruel. What a surprise. <laughs> the cold metal of the gun presses to your forehead. Unbutton my dress. Fuck. <sighs> I hate men. <laughs> you find yourself struggling with shaky hands, moving them up to his crotch. You find the button, unbuttoning them carefully. Take... <sighs> How is this? How is this proving that I'll be loyal and not tell his secrets? This is gonna make me want to do the opposite of that. Like I was already on the fence about whether or not to like keep your secret, but now, get fucked. <laughs> Fuck this guy. Ooh. I hope that there's a way to kill him, like, for realsies. <laughs> like, maybe we can ask Amon or Mortem, just be like, hey, that fucker down there, can we just take care of that? Just, just get rid of that guy. Unneeded. <laughs> he keeps the gun on your forehead as his fingers tangle from your hair. He grabs something from his hip. A knife. I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> Ugh! He keeps the gun against you. You're too hazy to really register that he has the blade quite yet. You're too hazy to really register that he has the blade quite yet. Hot, ripping pain strikes you off guard. You try to scream or do anything to pull away, but you can't. He slices through your tongue, and with the blade being slightly dull, he has to saw. Fuck this guy! You squirm, trying to do anything to pull away, but you're helpless until he pulls his hand away. You're in so much pain you almost feel numb. All you can taste is metallic blood. Oh, Your tongue. That should keep you silenced, right? The world feels of slow motion as you look down at the ground. The lump of flesh that was once your tongue mocks you. You honestly start to feel lightheaded. Seems more permanent than I thought. Too bad you can't just come back, huh? He sort of chuckles, holding your head. I wouldn't wish that on anyone, though. At that, you grow too weak to keep your eyes open. This motherfucker. <laughs> it's all so tiring. Ugh. It's the last thing we managed to... Did we die? Oh, God. Did you die? Again? This motherfucker. Ugh. Hmm. There's one more. What did we not do?
I don't want any more endings with this man unless it's like <laughs> killing him because fuck this guy. Ugh. Okay, well now I need to find a way to permanently put this man in the ground. There's very obviously a reason why he was cursed and it's probably because he's a bitch. Maybe I can like recruit the bastard to be like, look, I will get you all the sheep that I can get. I have an inn. Uh, if you could just come and kill this guy for me. And then you could also eat him. And also, he just doesn't die, so he could just very slowly get eaten to death. Or feel alive. I don't know. Maybe we could just tie him to a rock and let the bastard eat his guts out, and then he'll just regenerate the next day, and that'll just be his hell. I like that plan. Let me know if you have any ideas of how to remove a curse from a little bitch. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Said you didn't need me, but the pig you just sent says differently.